breaking. Sessions just made it legal. But not for pot users. There are many times that we are left wondering what was on the mind of politicians when they pushed for the policies that they believe to be best for Americans. In the case of the Trump administration, his first year has been filled with many victories but also littered roadblocks thrown up by the Democrats who disagree with his proposed policies. Unfortunately, investigations and accusations have kept this administration from getting as much done as they could have. One unexpected problem in the Trump administration came in the form of one of his own appointees. Attorney General Jeff Sessions was the second choice for his position after the first pick was bogged down in Russia collusion accusations by the left. What started off well enough has ended up with Sessions taking a lot of heat from diehard Trump supporters who think that he's a bit of a sellout. Time will tell if that is an accurate assessment, or if there's just more to the story than what we're being told at the moment. But Sessions' most recent move has a lot of people doubting his loyalty to Americans. The Attorney General has made a decision that seems absurd to many and downright dictatorial to others. The much-debated issue of marijuana being deregulated has come before Sessions, and he's decided to fight the deregulation. That in and of itself could seem like an issue where reefer supports just disagree with him. Let's face it. The issue of whether marijuana should be more readily available is one that's been debated from a legal, moral and medical standpoint for decades. However, widely acclaimed natural health expert David Wolf reports that the part of the issue that has Americans up in arms is that Sessions' apparent isn't against marijuana, he's just against releasing the control without proper compensation. In a shocking reversal of the progress made by the medical freedom movement, Attorney General Jeff Sessions has decided to undo the right of individual states to set marijuana laws and instead will be subject to the dictates of the federal government. But even worse, Sessions proved both his hypocrisy and corruption when his own DA granted notorious pharmaceutical company and sees therapeutics a virtual monopoly to make profits off of synthetic THC. A statement released on Thursday by the Department of Justice unveiled the new tyrannical philosophy. It is the mission of the Department of Justice to enforce the laws of the United States, and the previous issuance of guidance undermines the rule of law and the ability of our local, state, tribal, and federal law enforcement partners to carry out this mission. Therefore, today's memo on federal marijuana enforcement simply directs all U.S. attorneys to use previously established prosecutorial principles that provide them all the necessary tools to disrupt criminal organizations tackle the growing drug crisis, and thwart violent crime across our country. But in a shocking, though unsurprising, display of pay-to-play, Sessions' very own DEA while classifying cannabis as a Schedule One drug, decided to classify the synthetic THC drug Dronabinol, produced by pharmaceutical company NC's Therapeutics, as Schedule II. Effectively, this gives NC's a monopoly over the free market of medical THC a move that likely amounts to far more than just coincidence when you consider the company's long history of illegal activity. As the Free Thought Project reports, For those who don't know, NCS has become notorious over the last two years after six former executives and managers were arrested on charges that they engaged in a nationwide scheme to bribe doctors to prescribe a drug containing the opiate fentanyl. Now this same group of dangerous drug peddlers is being given a partial national monopoly on the sale of legal THC, by the group who claims to protect Americans from drugs. Along with the executives, Michael Bayich, the former CEO, was also charged in an indictment filed in federal court. Even the company's billionaire founder, John Kapoor was arrested in October for his role in the bribery scheme. He was freed on a $1 million bail after pleading not guilty. Needless to say, the level of corruption at play here cannot be overstated, yet it's nothing new for the medical freedom movement which has fought tirelessly for years on this matter, and many others. President Trump has consistently referenced the opioid epidemic sweeping the country, which seems like it should be a much higher priority than cracking down on a harmless plant. The regulation of something like marijuana is never going to be a cut and dry issue, and we can debate all day long if it should be available for over the counter sale. However, we can be sure of is that if anyone in government is selling out the best interest of Americans in order to keep more power for themselves, 
they're grossly overstepping their purpose, and must be stopped. Opt.